Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris of the Channel 5 News. Coming up, the Dominica Red Cross has appealed for 15 million EC dollars from its parent body to help Hurricane Maria victims. The Dominica Red Cross Society is one of the non-governmental organizations responding to Hurricane Maria's devastation in a massive way, from the distribution of kitchenware, hygiene kits, tarpaulins, and a debit card with funds, one might agree the response is nothing short of tremendous. And that is being done primarily through voluntary work. Leading that charge is Kathleen Pinard Byrne, who says it will be a long and painful process to get to pre-Maria status. It's been pretty massive, actually. The Red Cross has been operating in many sectors. We the Dominica Red Cross, we launched an international appeal for 5.5 million Swiss francs um, to cover the, this operation which will last for a year. Um, bearing in mind that everyone within the Dominica Red Cross has been impacted themselves. Very early on we were dispersing tarpaulins. We've probably dispersed around 8,000 tarpaulins to date. We continue to issue the non-food items, which uh, have a comprehensive range of items, kitchen sets, hygiene kits, jerry cans, um, the tarpaulins itself, the water buckets, mosquito nets. Um, these make up family kits, which we have been providing to persons in need. The Dominica Red Cross Society is also covering the water sector, having distributed 90,000 litres of potable water in communities with that necessity. We have been carrying out assessments in the communities of Roseau and the environs. This is, we are focusing on this catchment area, which is really the largest population, um, in order to avoid duplication of efforts. As you're aware, there are other um, aid organizations on island who so that by identifying the areas we work in it gives them the opportunity to go to other areas north of Roseau. What if someone comes to you that is out of that district? It depends on the circumstances. Um, I mean elderly persons, we disabled, we tend to accede to their, their needs regardless of where they're from. It's important to note that you're a non-governmental organization and even those agencies within the public sector have their human resource um, shortages. Now, how are you managing the assessments uh, in Roseau and the environs? Well, we send out volunteers to do the assessments prior to doing distributions. We have a psychosocial support team, which really started off with doing uh, a debriefing for the volunteers, bearing in mind that they themselves were impacted and have been working in the community since. It's clear that um, Hurricane Maria spared nowhere, no one. Um, but in your response um, activities, is there any one area that you see the, the brunt of the hurricane was um, more severe? No, this, this is a first where when you travel through the country, um, very often you're able to go from a less affected area to maybe a severely affected area. This time around, everyone has been impacted. In the coming weeks, we will transition to permanent shelter for 2,500 families. Um, these permanent shelter materials will comprise the galvanized sheeting, the screws, the lumber, the hurricane ties, and the capping. An important aspect of the relief is the cash transfer program, whereby um, debit cards to the value of 450 US will be issued to a thousand households. Um, this has already started and uh, will continue over the next couple of weeks. Um, this cash transfer program enables persons to purchase their immediate needs. The International Red Cross Federation has dispatched a relief team to assist the Dominica Red Cross Society in the aftermath of the hurricane. Idona John Baptist reporting for Channel 5 News. Up next, a critically endangered species here is fighting for its survival in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Andrea Louis has more. 
The mountain chicken, or crapo as it is commonly called, was once considered Dominica's unofficial national dish and was enjoyed as a delicacy by many. However, with the discovery of the chytrid fungus on island in 2002, the mountain chicken population had declined by 80 to 90%. A mountain chicken captive research and breeding facility was constructed in the Botanic Gardens with the aim of building up the mountain chicken population through in-captivity breeding. The actual population of mountain chicken in the wild had improved and there were promising signs of in-captivity breeding. However, all that progress suffered significant setback when Hurricane Maria plowed through the island. Senior amphibian technician with the Forestry Division, Marshall Sultan, told Channel 5 News that the facility in the garden suffered several levels of damage. Firstly, we start with the roof. Um, the roof got serious damage, whereas the garden has got blown away. Mm -hmm. um, some tree, we had some tree failing on the facility as well. Okay. And seeing that the, the roof actually got damaged, water came into the facility and that actually killed off all the live food, which means cricket. Mm -hmm. Um, also, we do have cockroaches, the um, forest cockroach that we feed the frogs with. Um, some of the beans got um, drenched with water, so some of the cockroaches drunk. We also had mortality of two frogs at the breeding facility, which is sad, but it is true. And again, the electricity got damaged and our water supply got seriously impacted. And as of today, we still don't have actually pipe-borne waters yet. As you mentioned two fatalities, was the total number of frogs that were in the facility before the hurricane? Okay, before the hurricane, we actually had um, three frogs. Okay. Um, initially, we had 12 frogs, but again, the fast is supposed to be biosecure, but um, we did have um, the virus chytrid get in, and we had some die-offs, and we actually had come down to four frogs, and we had another outbreak last year. So before this one, we just had three frogs, and two died, a male and a female, mm -hmm. and one male um, is the lone survivor. Okay. Now, we know the facility was um, erected or constructed to help bring back the crapple population because it, what, it was cut down because of the chytrid fungus. Um, what sort of blow would the damaged facility have on trying to rejuvenate the crapple population in Dominica? The actual facility is, is like a, a safety niche for the frogs because um, when chytrid struck in 2002, mm -hmm. it decimated the population by some 80%, so near extinction. So the facility served as a safety net for in case everything in the wild went extinct. Now, lately what we have realized is that the frogs were breeding in the wild, mm -hmm. so which actually um, took off the pressure of trying to breed the frogs in captivity. In captivity. But now that Sino Maria has come and destroyed the wild, mm -hmm. it adds back pressure on the fasti, but now the fasti now is almost non-functional because it's damaged. So right now we are with the government and forestry, what we're now trying to do is to rebuild the facility in another modern way that we can now see if we can go back in the wild and get some frogs and bring them back in the wild. Now, the thing that we've been doing since Mary's, we have gone out and do some field monitoring, night listening checks, and we have not heard any frogs, but um, we did have some persons calling and say that they have heard some frogs in Collier area, which is a place that we go sometime, but we haven't got anything, but it's good to know that we, we've got that course, we might go back there and see if we get any and try and bring them back in when the facility is operating. I remember speaking to you some time ago and you had mentioned that the best time to look for or listen for frogs is night time. What sort of challenges have you encountered since Maria in terms of going out to look for the frogs or listen for the frogs? In terms of Maria, well, um, safety, in terms of road safety, mm -hmm. uh, most of the sites, places kind of cut off or they're kind of dangerous, especially when rainfall. Okay. For instance, um, we have a site in Sufwe, which is very, very dangerous, the site itself. And now uh, we have the road safety now. If it rains, we can't really go to the side because it's prone to um, landslide and rockfall. Um, we have also had some issues with landowners of late that persons don't want to come on their land and again don't have light, so the thing is, is tea for those kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And another challenge is actually, remember in the site, mm -hmm. we normally had a, a set transect which we normally walk, but now it's all over the place and we just can't remember where exactly the transect used to be. So we had a challenge of remembering where. We used to get the frogs, the safety of ourselves, and as well going to the site mm -hmm. and landowners issue. Okay. I remember speaking to another forestry official earlier and they had mentioned the public was cooperating with them in terms of calling in to the forestry division mm -hmm. and saying where they had seen parrots in particular and even mm -hmm. agouti and other wildlife. Can the same be said for the public's cooperation in informing the division of where they have seen or heard the crapo? Yes, definitely. Um, we do have that kind of collaboration with the public where they actually mm -hmm. call in. And we would like to say thank you for all the general public who calls in, whether to you all or the radio stations. They have been cooperating. And as of yesterday, 
um, not frogs, but uh, a, a young lady called in and let us know where she saw a sighting of one of the first Cicero parrots, mm -hmm. which was really amazing for us because we've been worried. We have not heard anything from all the surveys we've done. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the public that actually call in and gave us not just a call in, but that's this picture and a video. Mm -hmm. For frogs, we have got calls out of the northwest areas of persons here in frog. We've gone out, we have not been able to see them also, but persons are calling and are cooperating. Uh, one thing we want to advise people again, there's a no hunting ban on any wildlife right now. And as well as of the frogs, there's a no hunting of frogs and as well no bringing of any frog pets or anything at all. So just to adhere to the no hunting ban. I know a lot of assistance has been coming into Dominica in the wake of Hurricane Maria. Even this facility was constructed based on foreign assistance. What has the feedback been like from the international community in helping Dominica recover from this, in particular referring to the helping the facility for the crapo? Okay, for the mountain chicken facility, so the, the repair works, we have actually had a budget done. We have had consultation with our partner, which is ZSL, and Dara Zuan. They do have experts out there who's trying to assist now. Um, from there, and what they're trying to do is get volunteers to come over and see if they can volunteer their service for free to help us build back the colony of crickets and live food. Also, we, we are trying to do a fundraising through um, ZSL and Doril. So um, persons who want to donate to wildlife, there'll be a fund set up in UK that they can actually contribute some monies and it will be sent down to us to repair the facility. So far, so good. It has been um, okay. We've had some successful meeting with them and as well the ministry. So we know at least get by next year, the fastest should be back up and running. Okay. That sounds awesome. Any closing remarks as you wrap up our discussion? Mm. Closing remarks? Yeah, anything. We just want to we don't want to remind the public again to add it to the law of no hunting. Um, not just Kwapo, but as well the Mani Kudiaguti, they do need a chance to um, recuperate from the storm. And also when to advise persons on slash and burn. Um, if you clean your land, try not to um, Burn it, or if you're burning, try and make sure you control the fire because right now it's really dry out there and we don't want to have any unnecessary bushfires and those things that can actually contribute to greater loss to the wildlife and the biodiversity of Dominica. Marshall, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And there we heard from Marshall Sultan, Senior Amphibian Technician with the Division of Forestry, speaking to us on the situation as regards the mountain chicken or the crop war. Reporting for Channel 5 News, I am Andrea Louis. Domlet's general manager says the rebuilding process is projected to cost the company in the region of 20 million U.S. dollars. Bertilia McKenzie told the Daily Press briefing at the Prime Minister's office on Wednesday, so far 1,666 Domlet customers have been reconnected, 805 in the south and 861 in the north of the island. 535 certified customers are currently awaiting connection. In Roso Central, 99.9% .9 of certified customers have been powered up. 100% Pottersville, Lower Goodwill 50%, Bath Estate and Newtown 25%, Canefield Industrial Area 100%, and Canefield and Forcole 10%. Picard 80%, Central Portsmouth 100%, Lago and Glenvillia 50%, and Chance 25%. Portsmouth and Environ should be completed in the next three weeks. But there are challenges. One of them has to do with limited materials available for the restoration process. We don't have all of what we need to do what we have to do. Um, the materials are coming in slowly. Obviously, the, the level of devastation that um, to the network um, could not have been envisaged before. Um, so we have a, a large number of our transformers that are damaged a large number of our street lights that are damaged um, through the storm. Then you have the post-storm damage, um, which also um, limits the restoration. Um, for example, you have areas you, you pass and you assess and you determine your scope of work. And uh, a few weeks later, because of, of um, other works taking place in the country by, by persons, then the scope of work has changed areas you would not have had to replace lines you now have to look for lines to replace those areas because the lines were damaged because of other activities so we do have those challenges um, they are not insurmountable but they are challenges that that do hamper the restoration but notwithstanding we'll continue to press ahead
Since Hurricane Maria, the number of households owning a generator has gone up significantly, but Domlex manager says this will not be a long-term problem for her company. The cost to own and maintain a personal generator, these portable generators, is vastly greater than the cost of your Domlex elect monthly electricity bill. And customers are meeting me all the time and saying, I need to get back onto Domlex because really I'm spending X number of dollars in gas or diesel and my Domlex bill was less than half of that. So I don't believe that there will be a problem. Um, in terms of um, the regulation of that, um, um, that falls within the purview of the Independent Regulatory Commission. Mrs. McKenzie is projecting that by April 2018, all customers will have access to the grid to facilitate reconnection. The registrar at the High Court says is it's unclear when the, his office will reopen, but says they're doing everything in their power to ensure they speed up the process. Most people, if not everyone, uh, were affected by the uh, Category 5 hurricane. Um, just touch on, you know, how the registry building was affected and, of course, how soon, if you have a deadline um, or a timeline, rather, as to the resumption of, of services um, in terms of the normal way of doing things. It's a good question, but the thing is, it's not only the registry building that was affected, it's the whole court system in the country and buildings. Um, I got about 4 a.m. this morning. I just couldn't sleep at that time, and I, I took pen and paper, Kenny, and I was just jotting down the number of things that needs to be addressed. I, I took camera shots of it when I was through, about three pages of it, and I sent it to PS's phone at 4 a.m. this morning. PS, these are my concerns, so things we need to look at. Uh, I wouldn't divulge too much of it now, but the courts, both civil and criminal Supreme Court, were affected, the buildings. The judges' residences were affected, Mufford Mon, Bruce and Edmond Daniel. The um, operations with respect to receiving documents of the registry as a result has been stultified. Once a building is not fully functional, people can't come in, but the members of the public, be it lawyers, lawyers, police, can come in to um, present documents to, to be processed. So it affects a, a wide facet of, of um, operations in society. Uh, as you are aware, the registry building houses not only the Supreme Court, but houses the civil registry, the probates registry, the deeds registry, the land registry. This is the engine of the country. And when that building is shut down, then you know, it brings to a halt a number of activities uh, in, in the country. So the Hurricane Maria affected us in a significant way, not only infrastructurally, in terms of the buildings, but in terms of operation. And we're hoping to get those things right as soon as possible. In fact, the PSNI only yesterday we met and instructions were given to get the material to cover, recover the part of the roof of the main building which wasn't covered. And I've been in touch with Max Ray Trading to deal with that. We were going to deliver it today. And a generator was ordered to be stationed outside the registry today. Uh, and had it not been for the mold situation, we would have seen some action in another regard taking place. So, um, a lot of things need to be corrected. We're trying our best to normalize operations as soon as possible. It's not easy to put a timeline on things, I'll tell you. We have to deal with lawyers out there. Are lawyers ready? Are the files in order? Are the registry's files in order? Um, the pr prosecutorial team, the head of the prosecutorial team, the Honorable DPP, are files in order? Is everything in order there? Um, so there's so many little things to deal with. Where are the exhibits? Are all the exhibits in order? What has been compromised? How do we deal with it? A lot. So those little intricacies are to be dealt with behind the scenes. We have to ensure that those matters are addressed and addressed to the T before we can, we, can, we can open for business once again. And not only in our main buildings, though the Honourable Prime Minister and the Honourable Minister have decided, they have decided, that we can use the parliament building for court purposes. There are also logistical matters we have to deal with there, like where does the judge sit, retire, where does the jury retire for criminal cases, and um, a lot of little things. It's not just opening court. And um, we have to ensure the judges are comfortable. While the buildings are being, um, the current residences are being um, rebuilt or being um, rehabilitated, where do they stay? 
what conditions the judge should stay under in, in other buildings. It's just as high standard as they were living in prior to the hurricane. So there's so many other things to deal with. Both judges are out of state, but I'm in constant touch with them. So it's not just flipping a magic wand or spinning the coin. There are a lot of things to put in place. And a lot of work is being done. Before I did this interview, the Madam Chief Registrar, Mrs. Tables and I spoke for a long time on the phone this morning. I'm putting together a report for the Honorable CJ, uh, which would reach her shortly and reach the Honorable Minister as well, as to how do we deal with those questions which I just raised. And all that is as a result of Maria. And that was Registrar of the High Court on our report on services resuming at the registry. Reporting for Channel 5 News, I am Kenny Williams. This has been the Channel 5 News. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us next time.